Hi there, Miguel here. Today we will review Make It Stick, The Science of Successful Learning by Mark McDaniel, Henry Rodiger III, and Peter Brown. Have you ever studied your brains out for a test only to get to it and completely blank out? I know, me too. We will first look at three common mistakes people make while learning, the first of which is reading and rereading. Some of us might say, hey, I've read it three times, I've got it. But alas, familiarity does not equal mastery. The second common mistake is cramming. I've got 99 problems, and I'll do Monday. But cramming often prevents long-term learning. Remember, easy comes, easy goes. The third and last mistake we'll review today is block practice, which means we master one type of problem and neglect other types of practice. For example, if you're a basketball player and you only practice free throws, you'll only be good at free throws. Rookie mistakes aside, in the next few minutes we'll look at 8 solid ideas backed by research on how to study like a pro and take your learning from here to here. So stay with me. Number one, retrieval practice, which means we'll be retrieving material from memory. For example, looking at the short quizzes at the end of the chapter. You can also write your own quizzes or use a blackboard to remind yourself what you learned. Lastly, you can just ask yourself, what did I learn from this chapter? The authors of the book run the following experiment in a middle school. Two classes with the same teacher and curriculum would be assessed for three semesters. The only difference, occasional quizzes throughout the semester. The results were compelling. The now 8th graders averaged 79% on the material that hadn't been quizzed, whereas the quiz takers averaged a 92% or an A-. Minus. Number 2. Spaced practice, which means we leave time in between study sessions. For example, flashcards are a good way to do this, but we must revisit them periodically. Another way to space our practice is to alternate between subjects during study sessions. 38 surgeons took microsurgery lessons on how to reattach tiny vessels. Half the surgeons completed their training in a single day, and the other half completed the same lessons in four weeks. A month later, not only did the crammers do worse on the test, during the practical, almost 20% of them killed their little rodent subjects. Number three, interleaved practice, which means to mix up the different types of problems you're trying to solve. An example of this is a group of baseball players who've hit 15 consecutive fastballs, 15 curveballs, and 15 changeups for 8 weeks, whereas another group changed it up a bit. At the end of 8 weeks, the interleaved practice group was significantly better. Number 4, elaboration, which means to find additional layers of meaning, for example, by relating the material to what we already know or explaining it to others. Also, we can visualize how a concept works in real life or find metaphors that work for the material. Thelma is 88 years old and still pretty hot in the music circles of New York. She has developed a gift for learning that beautifully illustrates elaboration. When she studies a new score, she learns the fingering, kinesthetic learning, listens to the sound of it, auditory learning, and carefully studies the notes on the score, visual learning. On top of that, she coaches herself out loud as she goes through the transitions. Lastly, she visualizes on the music sheet the places where she may need to speed things up or go up an octave. That, my friends, is elaboration. Number five, generation, which means we'll attempt to answer a question before we're even shown material related to it. Educational researchers tested this idea in a group of students who were given a pretest about an unknown subject and some study time. Conversely, the other group had a little more time to study about the subject before a post-study test. The results showed that post-test performance was significantly better in the pre-test group. Created using Powtoon.